Hey guys, my name's Tomato Anus, also known as Dongus Minimus, and this is a speedrun to become a pirate in Fallout 4. Now, while you can't physically become a pirate in the game, there is a quest titled The Last Voyage of the USS Constitution, wherein you help some NPCs get their frigate running again. This is a speedrun of that quest. You'll notice right away that instead of starting the game from the beginning, we began the game by loading a save. This is because this is a newer category, and us runners didn't want to have to do the full intro if the category is as much of a joke as this one. Just because this category is a meme though, doesn't mean that it isn't very technically involved. The run starts off doing typical VLC clips and setting up a punch warp which will teleport us across the map, followed by some new funky out of bounds stuff that's new to the vault segment of Fallout 4. I'll explain this out of bounds stuff in a moment, but for now just know that it effectively skips having to wait for the elevator and riding it up, which saves about 30 to 40 seconds. When we exit the vault, we're immediately going to run down to Sanctuary and trigger our punch warp, which will send us to the center of the map by Green Tech Genetics. Once we land, we're going to quick save and quit to the main menu, followed by loading that save again. This will give us our pit boy since we skipped grabbing it in the vault. If you skip the pit boy in the vault and somehow are able to exit the vault, the pit boy is automatically given to you upon exiting. The issue is that the pit boy will be invisible until you either enter power armor or quit to the main menu, which is what we do in this run to make it visible. After we get our pit boy back, we're going to run across Boston towards the Haba, which is where the USS Constitution is located. Along the way, we'll pick up a few frag mines for punch warping. Now that we have that out of the way, it's time to explain how we skip the elevator in the vault, which is the phenomenon that we refer to as COC2. COC is a mechanic in the creation engine that stands for center on cell. If you're unaware, cell is the word for the individual areas in the game. Vault 111 is a cell, the Institute is a cell, Fort Hagen is a cell, every individual location you can enter is a cell. Even the Wasteland is a cell, albeit one that's set up a bit differently than the others, but we'll get to that in a bit. If you fall out of bounds in the game, it would be pretty unideal to fall forever into the void. To avoid this, Bethesda put a safeguard into place that we refer to as the COC plane. The COC plane is an invisible plane that spans horizontally underneath each cell. If the player falls out of bounds, the moment they hit the COC plane, they'll then get teleported to either a predetermined location in the cell, or the location directly above where they are falling. But only if there is solid ground above the spot where they hit the COC plane. The thing about the COC plane though, is that there is actually an edge to it, making it possible to be far enough out of bounds that we can miss the plane and continue falling. Luckily, your fall would be finite, as you'd eventually hit the floor of the out of bounds of the cell, which is what we refer to as COC2. If you hit this floor, you will then seemingly get wrapped to the top of the cell slash playable area in the cell, although it doesn't always behave exactly that way. Fortunately, it does behave this way if you fall outside of the COC plane in the vault, and then turn around and fall back underneath the map, but below the COC plane. This will cause for you to fall until you hit the cell floor, and get upwarped to the top of the playable area directly above you, instead of just the solid ground above you. It turns out that the load zone to exit the vault is at the top of the elevator, so if we COC2 beneath the elevator, we will automatically hit the load zone and exit the vault. This fall to COC2 is typically very long, but it can be shortened and skipped if you quick save and quick load, which is what we do in the vault to skip the full fall. Once we finally arrive at the USS Constitution, we do our best Florida Man impersonation and take off all of our clothes, followed by scaling the side of the building to our destination. Once we make it above deck, we speak with the legend himself, Ironsides, who will give us the quest Last Voyage of the USS Constitution. We then trigger the cannons to help in the defense from a scavenger attack, and then fast travel away to Vault 111. When we arrive at the vault, we're going to start running west to a specific tree where we're going to set up a punch warp. We're then going to follow that by fast traveling to green tech genetics and triggering the punch warp, but we're going to do something different after we trigger it. This isn't going to be any ordinary punch warp, this is what's called a punch warp interrupt. Do you remember how when I was talking about cells I mentioned how the wasteland is a cell but it's a bit different than the other ones? Well, normally when you enter a cell, the whole cell is loaded. Naturally, a loading screen to enter the wasteland would take ages if you had to load it all at once every time you entered it. Instead of loading the full wasteland, the game loads a small section of the wasteland depending on your location. These small sections are what we refer to as chunks. 
Chunks are predetermined sections in the game. Imagine the map were divided into a big grid. Each square is a chunk. The game only loads chunks that you are in and or near. When you punch warp across the map from one chunk to another, the game kinda has a panic attack. This is what happens when we set up our punch warp in the far northwest corner of the map and trigger it in the center of the map. Instead of just loading us in at the destination, the game will load the final chunk of your destination, but then for some reason, have you load the chunks along the path of the direction you're punch warping in. If you mash M to pull up your Pip boy map while this is happening, you can actually interrupt your punch warp across the map and leave you in the location of one of the chunks that you were loading along the way. Sometimes though, the game's memory will have certain chunks loaded which throws off the punch warp interrupt, so we have to perform it twice for it to work, which is what happened in this run. When this punch warp interrupt is successfully performed, it will cause for us to load in at the Corvega assembly plant. If you're familiar with the USS Constitution quest, you'll know that we have to repair the ship in order to help Ironsides and company return the ship to the Atlantic Ocean. The final item we need to repair the ship are FLL3 turbo pump bearings, which spawn inside of the assembly plant. By getting the bearings right away, and then repairing the ship with them right away, we can sequence break the quest to completion almost immediately. Upon entering the plant, we load a save we made at Green Tech and then set up a punch warp in a nearby location. When we trigger this punch warp inside of Corvega, we'll be teleported next to the chest that contains the bearings. After grabbing them, we'll then run to a nearby exit and fast travel back to the USS Constitution. When we arrive back at the ship, we'll ride a dinghy elevator back above deck. We don't really have any weapons right now for an upcoming fight, so we need to do some looting. We're going to do all of our looting when we go below deck to install the bearings. In order to install the bearings, we need to get behind a locked door. Luckily, there's a window nearby. Attempting to melee attack an object in vats on the other side allows for us to contort to the size of a lunchbox and squeeze through the gaps in the window. Bethesda. We then do some looting and use our handy robot assistant to perform this window magic trick one more time. When looting the military crates below deck, we're looking for weapons that use different ammo types to be able to fully take advantage of all the different kinds of ammo we're looting. We only ended up being able to utilize two of the ammo types, but we got super lucky with finding a quick hair trigger sniper rifle. This is great because it allows for us to pick off the scavengers with great accuracy and precision or at least great accuracy and precision by my standards. Our goal is to be sure to pick off the scavengers before they ever get close to the ship, because if any get inside, the quest becomes a total reliance on the competency of the AI, which, I mean, come on, it's Fallout 4 AI. We want to avoid that at all costs. The rest of the run consists of my incredible shooting ability, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with by now, followed by some dialogue empowering up the USS Constitution. I also missed a jump to the circuit breaker a couple times at the end, but that's because I was just so done with this speedrun category because while it is a fun meme, it honestly sucks as a run because of the behavior of the robots. Some runs, they would just not help at all and it was impossible to get a decent time, and sometimes the scavengers just wouldn't stop spawning. Overall though, the final time for this run is solid, but definitely beatable. That being said, I do not recommend anyone to try out this category. 
If you're interested in trying out any Fallout 4 run, I would recommend either Any% percent, Glitchless or Sex% percent, which is probably the easiest of any Fallout 4 run to learn. Oh, by the way, if you're new to the channel and are wondering what the heart is in the bottom left corner, that's my heart rate. During my streams, I'll often wear a Garmin heart rate monitor that's connected to my computer wirelessly via an Ant Plus USB stick. This is so that you can see what parts of the run I'm getting most nervous during. Also, if you're watching this video before July 26, 2019, I just wanted to let you know that I'll be doing a Fallout 4 Any% percent run live that day at ESA, which, if you're unaware, is often described as the European version of GDQ. I'll be traveling to Sweden to be part of the event, which is raising monies for an Alzheimer's foundation that's based out of Europe. As of today, my run is scheduled to be done on their second stream at twitch.tv slash esamarathon2 at 4.43pm CST. If you'd like to view this schedule yourself closer to the date and see what time my run will actually be at the day of, you can head over to esamarathon.com slash schedule and check it out for yourself. There was actually a recent reroute to Fallout 4 based on some new discoveries that save around 40 seconds throughout the run, and I don't think I'll have a video out about it by then, so that's the first time you'll be able to see the new route in action. That is, unless you've been watching me practice the route at twitch.tv slash tomatoanus. All I'll say about it though is that cover sliding isn't a part of the route anymore. With that being said, I think this is where I'll stop rambling and let you enjoy my awful jumping abilities that are coming up shortly. I've been Tomato Anus, I appreciate you, and I hope you have an above average day. Félicitations, Capitaine. C'est comme si c'était fait. Navigateur. 